Oh my word. Game Freak makes things other than Pokemon? Blasphemy! Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to one of my favorite Game Boy Advance games of all time, Drill Dozer. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to refer to it by refer to it by its proper name, Screwbreaker Goshin Doriurero, as they'd call it overseas. <laughs> yes, I think this ranks up there as one of my one of the games I would reach for every time our family went on a road trip, right up there with the Legend of Zelda Oracle games. As you see, I've deleted all of my save files just for this project, including my childhood one, where I had everything unlocked. For those of you who have played this game before, you know how much of a daunting task that is, but that is neither here nor there. As we look up the starry sky and the lit up city in the background, these are really good visuals for the GBA, by the way. I must add, this game looks great, sounds great too. If you think it sounds a lot like Pokemon Ruby, well, number one, this is Game Freak, and because of that, it uses a lot of the same sound fonts and instruments that Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire did, so that's why. Looks like we're here. The red diamond those evil scholars stole from us has to be in this hideout. They're probably waiting for you, so watch yourself in there. Now, I'm probably going to skip by most of this dialogue, though, to be honest with you. Number one, I read it pretty quickly. Number two, I've seen it about a million times in the past, so... Um... You can go through that yourself whenever you like. That's not what this game is all about. This game is all about what she just showed right there. Just breaking everything with your machine. Hmm, what's going on in here, I wonder? Huh? What's that? <laughs> what is this Looney Tunes bullshit? Sorry, sorry, old habits die hard. I had to. <laughs> Are you okay, Boster Wolf? Ah, uh, yes. So here's a little bit of trivia about this game. As I stated previously, in Japan, this game is called Goshin Doriurero as its subtitle, with Screwbreaker being the... <laughs> She's all dizzy from the fall and everything. I love the little details like that. Even after she gets back into... Well, okay, I'll talk about that in a second. Now, there's a couple interesting things about that title, that name, th some things that don't directly translate, and I'd like to discuss with you guys. This character's name, if you haven't noticed, her name is Jill, and she's the leader of these guy co guys called the Red Dozers. Now, in Japan, her name is Dori Kururi. Now, what does that mean? Well, curious, I went to Google to try and find out. Kururi, the original translations I could find online, or maybe some kind of emerald or ruby or gem, something to that effect. But then I dug a little deeper. I realized that kururi as a word may mean a gem, but kururi as a sound effect means to turn, pivot, or whirl. And when you take into account that this game's name is Dori Kurur. No, sorry. <laughs> Dori Urero. I'm getting my mind mixed up here. You're starting to figure out the pun, aren't you? Obviously, there's no equivalent like that in English names, so it's just something I wanted to point out. I've learned a lot of cool things about this game's development and preparation for this project, but we'll save the rest of them for another time. Right now, I just kind of want to enjoy this game a little bit. So, yeah, as you see, the main mechanic is drilling through everything in your path. This is everything the game is about, is using the L and R buttons to basically bust up the entire building here in. Also, attention scholars, business minions must always put on a fake smile. Thug minions are required to frown and look intimidating at all times. Duly noted, okay. <laughs> Glad we've set a standard here, ladies and gentlemen. All right, what I love about this game the most, you'll notice right here if I have Jill just kind of stop, She's still dizzy from the fall. She's still kind of recovering from everything that happened. All the little animations you can make the character do, like she can duck inside the machine, she can look up, she can look around. Even as she's moving, her hair kind of curls back together again when you stop because the momentum is done. This game just looks fantastic. The animation is unbelievable. So as I just explained there, this is a self-repairing wall. You can try to take it down with your normal gear, but it's not going to work. It'll just fix itself. So what do we do? 
Well, we need to find a little bit of equipment in the environment around us. That equipment being a gearbox, and this is one of the best parts about this game. They've gotten you used to the normal mechanic of just drilling normally. Now let's step this up a little bit. Gear Secondo! That's another thing I'm probably going to abuse way too much. So yeah, they're going to give us another tutorial here. I... Look, I understand the point of complicated tutorials like this, okay? When you're dealing with mechanics that are not native to any other game, yes, you have to teach people. But why not give me an option to avoid this if I've played the game before? I mean, it just kind of takes up time. I mean, they've only got one or two in the beginning of the game, but it's a small things like that that can kind of take away from the experience, especially when you're starting up a new file. Ha! <laughs> you think you're in my way? Wrongo! Fuck your walls! Oh, I just realized I need to get used to that again. I'm not pay playing Parasite Eve anymore. I need to get used to not cursing anymore. I don't have that luxury. This game is rated E for everyone, so... By the way, a little intercom right here. A young girl with a drill dozer has broken into our hideout. Don't let her anywhere near the factory on the surface. A drill dozer? You mean there's more than one? Oh, this music. Gotta say, this game sounds fantastic. Then again, this is coming straight from the guys who made the Pokemon game, so of course the music would be awesome. And especially Pokemon Ruby. <laughs> I know I'm alone in a lot of respects in this, but Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, Gen 3 was one of, one of my favorite gens. I don't know why. I just kind of like the setting. I like the creatures. I like the setup, the badges, the gyms, everything. But again, well, <laughs> that's kind of one of the things... When you're at the dinner table, you don't talk about politics or religion. When you're doing a Let's Play, you don't talk about... <laughs> you're adding Pokemon generations to that list. <laughs> Just something you don't want any trouble with. We're going with this box right here. You'll find boxes like that all over the place. Make sure you check every nook and cranny of this game, okay? There is treasure everywhere. And trust me, even if you go out of your way to get everything, you will never have enough chips. See that metal block? It's made of some kind of super strong alloy. Your drill dozer's standard drill won't even scratch it. Shifting up won't help either, so don't bother. You're gonna have to find another way around. Screw that, I wanna go through! Ah, oh, look at all those chips I could be getting down there! Seriously, look at them! <laughs> oh, by the way, did I mention you can do that with this character? If you hold B, she pops out of her drill dozer and... <laughs> I love this animation. She looks like a little groundhog popping out of her hole. She looks so curious about everything she's looking at, too. Like, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> she's adorable. Speaking of adorable, another little detail I love. You bring her right up to an edge. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm going to fall over. Oh, no. <laughs> she's a weird kind of character. She's both awesome and adorable at the same time. Never says a word, but she's got tons of personality. This is a silent protagonist I can actually get behind, mostly because they flesh her out in different ways. It's not... And she's not even the sort of audience stand-in like Link or anything, I don't think. She... She feels like a real character who has dreams, goals, and ambitions, despite the fact that she never directly talks about them herself. She lets her actions do the talking for her. See, that's how you do a silent protagonist correctly, if you plan on doing one at all, really. I'm I'm not really a fan of characters. I want characters to have more personality than less. Maybe that's just me being me again and me being alone on that. Yes, guys, I realize. I know about socket lifts. Oh, jeez. Why don't you just let me show the audience instead of telling them? All of these tutorials, this is the weirdest part about this game. All of these things, they take great detail to explain to you here. There's a better way to learn about all of it, and we'll discuss that in the next episode, but it's... Mm, again, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I'm not going to make you wait till the very end of the project to explain a lot of things like I did in Parasite Eve, either. You'll find about all of this soon enough. Way sooner than you expect, too. Uh, don't bother going up above me, because we'll visit that place soon enough. This particular area, we just need to go forward and go into this door, because the path will lead us back around eventually. Don't need to walk around in circles. Hey, what are you looking at? Get out of here. You too. 
<laughs> I just always love doing that. This game is so full of expression. That's one of the things I love about it. That there's so much character to everything that's going on in every little detail and animation. It's hard not to love it. You can set up funny little scenarios like that too, where your characters just do things that look funny, that look like things they'd actually be doing and actually be reacting to. You set up your own stories in terms of the game. <laughs> it's awesome. I love that. This is how you do artistic direction correctly. And again, it's one of the reasons I always reach for this game, I think. Ah, uh, but no time to talk about that. Here we go. Are you ready for the best thing in this game? Wait for it. Best song ever. And watch what this third gear does for us. See all this stuff in our way? Two, three. Watch this. <laughs> Power. <laughs> That's so satisfying. Just light them up, man. Let me plow through. I can take it. Oh, you got another repairing wall for in my way? I don't think so. <laughs> Nothing stands in your way. It's awesome. I love it. Every single thing about it. Not even bullets, bombs, or enemies can stand in my path. I'm just a monster at this point. You can't stop me. Can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread Jill. Now, there is one thing that can stop you though. I joke, and it's coming up here in a second. See these enemies that are shooting bullets? Normally you can deflect those with your drill, but watch this. You have to be exactly on their level. You see, that bullet came just a little too high above my drill and it still hit me. It's one tiny little thing you have to be aware of and constantly pay attention to. But again, that's just sort of a skill element. I don't mind that so much because... It's just that kind of game. Break on through to the other side, Jill. Got so many things to drill, so many things to see. But also, I love the X-Play review of this game. I like to drill things. <laughs> if anyone remembers that particular skit that they did. Oh, don't do this to me again! There's another one in my way. You could go up to the level three and constantly hit it, nothing happens. Mm. That's the only thing I take away from this game. Once again, I need to ask if I'm alone on this, but am I the only one who's bothered when exploration games like Metroid or this do that, where they hide something in plain sight, where it's completely blatant that you need a new power-up to come back and get it with? That you have to backtrack later in order to find that? I don't... Mmm. Drives me insane. I hate that shit. Stop. Stop the cursing. You gotta tone that down, man. There are children watching this. Namely yourself later when you're watching this in editing. <laughs> and there we go. That's the first part of the fortress done. Well, not entirely done. Tell, take the elevator up. The only thing missing from that scene is really laid back piano elevator music. <laughs> that calm little moment, we go straight back into the hectic, frantic third gear song. Now check this out. We got another block here that we can't destroy. Uh, once again, we need a power-up to, to get that. There's a little heel right there, and guess where we are? Right back where we started. We have indeed come full circle. <laughs> and I love how there was some treasure hidden just out of view. If you actually thought to go back there, then you'd find that healing item. But they didn't show it in the cutscene or anything. That... That. I'll agree with that, okay? Keeping something out of sight unless you go explore for it, that's something I can get behind. Also, I skipped over the dialogue right there, kind of, but I love video games, just in general. What other medium inspires phrases like, drill into the hole on its nose? <laughs> kind of reminds me of the Runaway Guys LP of Kirby Return to Dreamland. Again, what other medium inspires phrases like, who's driving the shoe? 
<laughs> Having such a good time! Oh, it's so much fun going through this again. And now they expand on the base mechanic even further. Now they introduce the idea of spinning this in two different directions. Oh, sure, you can turn your drill to the right, and that'll do specific things. But after we raise up this door enough to be able to slip through, now we have to bring this door back down so we can get past this. So, bust open this wall right here. Turning it right just brings up the wall even further. So you know what we have to do? Press the L button. Ah, hmm, -hmm. so we can drill in two different directions. Now, when is that ever going to come into gameplay other than just raising and lowering doors like this? You'd be surprised. They get incredibly creative with their own mechanics in this game. I must say, I can't think of a single thing to do with them that they haven't already done. By the way, that line of dialogue right there, I'll come pick you up in a second. First time I played this game, I was doing exactly what I'm doing right now. I was waiting for the cutscene to begin, waiting for him to come by and pick me up. And then I realized, oh wait a minute, you want me to move further a little more. And a little is right. All they want you to do is just walk forward a little bit. That's so jarring, don't you think? That's so out of place. It's like, why'd you even bother saying that to me if I could just walk forward a little bit and see for myself that the area has been cleared? That you were going to come pick me up and that was the end of the level. I don't know. <laughs> That's a nitpick. I w whoa, 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 calm down, dude. Seriously, it wasn't that rough of a run. Aw, did you get too drunk last night again? Whoa, your drill dozer really took a beating. Your gears won't last forever, you know. They get worn away over time from hard use. Don't sweat it, though. I'll patch her up as best as I can. Bling, 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 bling. Hits us with bling. Our drill dozer's back into shape, but it's back down to only one gear. You know what? Games like Metroid that try to justify taking your powers away at the beginning of every level, this... This excuse I'll accept, because yeah, it's a machine, it's gears, and especially considering how much drilling you're actually doing here, I can accept that excuse. So Jill is taking over as the boss of the Red Dozers while her dad is recovering. She's the boss now, you can't call her cutie. Why not? That's what she is, she's adorable, just like I said. We managed to escape from that trap, but this time, we're taking back the Red Diamond they stole from us. Oh yes indeed. Do you want to save? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. And your progress has been saved. Oh, dear God! <laughs> okay, her sprite is adorable. Her animations are adorable. But her detailed profile picture... I... It's the eye... It's the eyebrows, man. That and the fact that she's got sideburns bigger than mine. I, she... Am I the only one that thinks she kind of looks like a man with pigtails in this portrait? It's not the most flattering picture, I'll say that much. But never mind that. Next time on Let's Play Drill Dozer, we will be heading not to Area 1-2, the Skolar Factory. No, we'll actually be taking a detour here. We'll be heading to the Red Dozer's training course to cover a lot of the mechanics that we'll be dealing with in the future and see just how creative this game can possibly get. Like I said, you'd be surprised. Plus, it'll also allow me to skip a lot of the dialogue explaining this shit in a rudimentary way later on, so yeah, have fun with that. Until then, I'm What the Fnew, and I will see you guys later. <laughs> or see you guys next time. I need to set up my own in outro better. Do you know that? You've been at this how long and you can't realize that? <laughs> Later, everybody.